Welcome to the show, guys. It's the Crypto Lark. And it's Crypto Candor. Exciting times. We're going to do an awesome collab video for you guys talking about all of the latest in the crypto space. How's it going? Can't complain. Same old. Busy, <laughs> but I guess that's a good thing, right? That is a good thing. There's always so much happening in the crypto space. It's yeah, hard to keep up with it sometimes, but you've been doing really awesome stuff on your channel and providing really great information. So if any, by the way, if anyone hasn't seen her stuff yet, you got to go and check it out. There'll be a link down below for that. So make sure you guys go over there and support her channel. So I thought a fun place to start today would actually be going through the top 10. So what about Bitcoin? Let's start there. What's right. going on with Bitcoin these days? Obviously the price is up, but what do you think about it? I don't know. I, I, so there's this podcast that I listened to called Crypto Basic, and they had talked about this briefly too, saying that um, transactions are down and transaction fees are down, but the price is up, which is kind of bizarre. Um, kind of a blessing too, because there was some Bitcoin that I had sitting on different wallets that I wanted to move around, but I didn't really feel like spending $20 a transaction. So I'm mm. glad that it's come down for a minute. Uh, so I've been able to move some stuff. I don't really have any idea why the transactions have come down. Do you have any guesses? Part of it might just be hodling, and there might be people simply yeah. acquiring, um, trading on exchanges and not actually moving it out of their exchange addresses. That's probably part of it. But a large part of it may simply be people hodling. I mean, if you're a big Bitcoin enthusiast and a believer in the future potential of Bitcoin, you'd be kind of crazy selling it now at $11,000, even though that's yeah, for sure. great for recent times price-wise. And there's a lot of people out there swing trading that. But... I'm personally not moving mine anywhere. I'm not selling my Bitcoin. Mm -mm. Not so, me either. No, and I think a lot of people probably feel that same way. Like, we're holding on. Why, what's what's to transact if we're not selling? Absolutely. And there's no incentive. I mean, we've seen where it's gone just a few months ago. So who's to say this is just not a lull? And then with my luck, you know, I'd sell it and it would go up like 50%. So I think <laughs> I'm just going to hang out for a little while. That's it. I think... I'm a big believer that this is going to be another year of new all-time highs. And in spite of the, like the constant stream of FUD against Bitcoin, it continues on regardless of all that drama. I mean, it is the honey badger after all. That's it. You know, I was just looking at The Guardian, and I'm working on my Bitcoin news video for the day. And there was some article attacking uh, Bitcoin. And then I look at the like the ten like the ten related articles, and they're all anti Bitcoin articles. And so then I start really? looking and say, "Oh, who's behind the Guardian?" And of course, it's owned by a private company that has affiliates with the Rothschilds and all this stuff. And it's just you guys always have to question where's your information coming from? The people attacking Bitcoin, yep. what are their motives? Yep, always look at your sources. Now let's go on to Ethereum. Ethereum has had a amazing year without a doubt i mean at this time last year you were picking up ethereum for a few bucks now mm -hmm. of course it's up around a little under 900 well below though it's recent all-time highs what do you think are we going to see some massive price action again on ethereum or are the competitors going to start eating away at it see i'm i'm a little biased because anybody who's spoken to me individually for maybe longer than a few minutes knows that ethereum's like the first crypto love i had i bought in for the first time when it was 17 dollars. so um, to me, I, I may have, have blinders on a little bit, and I know that there's definitely other platforms out there like Neo, and they're doing ICOs on Stellar now. So there's definitely competition. But if Ethereum can pull off, you know, their their upgrades going to the proof of stake system, improving their scalability, transaction speeds, things like that, I think people are going to have a hard time dethroning that as far as a platform for DApps and things go, smart contracts. But I'm interested to see. You know, it would definitely be cool. Uh, if there was a little bit more competition, well, I guess time will tell, right? Yeah, time will tell indeed. I, honestly, everyone always says, yeah, but Ethereum's only got 15 transactions per second uh, and all this stuff. But you look at all the people who are working concurrently on different designs and it's it, we have sharding, we have off-chain scaling solutions via Raiden, we have side chains, you know, the guys at Plasma are developing some awesome stuff. The guys over at Sonom have developed a, a Plasma-like sidechain solution as well. So everyone's working on trying to make Ethereum better. Yeah. So anybody who's counting Ethereum out, I just think that's craziness. That's craziness. Yeah, Although Ethereum's the others will come I'm up. <clears throat> that's something I don't sell. <laughs> I've got a little stockpile and that's not going anywhere. <laughs> so that's like my, my uh, 
my little egg there that I'm just hatching. Excellent. There's so much, there's still a lot of forward potential for Ethereum too, as the cryptocurrency Absolutely. market revs back up going into the, the year. But you know, everyone always wants to get those, you know, the sickest gains possible. Yeah. And of course, so they look farther down the list, but you know, something like Ethereum, top cryptocurrency, fairly safe place to be putting in at least some I agree money. with you. Number three, Ripple. Well, um, uh, if anybody has seen my channel recently, <laughs> I just did a comparison video on Ripple and Stellar. Um, it was received as I expected it, which was Stellar people were okay about it. And then the Ripple people were just, I think, upset that I didn't mindlessly shill it. In my learning about Ripple, it kind of just reestablished what I was already assuming is that I'm not entirely certain what its role is, like where it's going to land because out of the three flagship uh, programs or platforms that they have, only one of which requires XRP and only about like five companies are using XRP. Um, people forget that Ripple and XRP are two different things. So I don't really know, and I don't know if I really feel like getting yelled at by more Ripple people, but I certainly think that that's a project that you need to do your research on uh, before investing in, because it's it takes, takes a little time to get through it. Yeah, I've never been a big Ripple fan personally. I feel like it kind of goes against a lot of the ideas behind yeah. what cryptocurrency is offering anyway. You know, have decentralized solutions that don't require a middleman like the yeah. Ripple Foundation in order to make it ha make it successful. So, yeah, not a big fan of Ripple, but there you go. Yeah, and also tailoring it to banks, which seems sort of like it's defeating the purpose, but I digress. <laughs> exactly. Well, I was talking yesterday in my live stream that, you know, banks aren't necessarily the devil. You know, they can offer solutions for mainstream people to get involved, but creating sol solutions to help the banks save money, it's not necessarily the way to go. I was looking at an article of um, a Dutch bank that's going to start offering cryptocurrency wallets for their customers. I thought, well, that's cool. That, oh, that's that, cool. That, that makes mainstreaming cool. And that is a bank that might be able to get ahead of the curve and stay mm -hmm. relevant as the decentralization of money moves forward. But I do worry about banks like Goldman Sachs buying up Poloniex. What is their intention behind that? Where are they yeah, going to go with it? I just heard about that. I was surprised. That, but that's, that's terrifying. But also in the same light, then you have, I think it was Germany that considers cryptocurrency an actual currency now. So you're not going to get taxed on capital gains. So if you buy a cup of coffee, it's going to be taxed as a cup of coffee, not as capital gains, which is awesome because that's the kind of adoption that we need. So. Absolutely. Because that's the thing that most people don't realize. And I, I know that tax accounting is not the, the, the hottest topic, but if you're like in the United States and you go and buy a cup of coffee with Bitcoin, well, you've got to pay your state tax, your federal tax, and then you have to pay tax on the Bitcoin that you used to buy that cup of coffee, yeah. which is insane. Who's, who's, yeah. who's accounting for that? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, Bitcoin Cash. Yeah, so this is one of those projects that I almost feel bad saying this, but I know very little. Um, I know that Roger Ver, as I was saying before, is a little intimidating. I know that he's very passionate about the project. And I do know that there is a pretty large following. I think the idea behind it's pretty cool, but I have a hard time believing that it's genuinely gonna surpass Bitcoin. I feel like the maximalists are strong. And again, who knows what the year is gonna hold, it's definitely hung on and it's gotten higher in price than I ever expected it to. So I commend them for that, but I don't really have a good enough understanding or grasp of the project to, to give any kind of opinion about it, I guess. Yeah, I can agree with you on the point that I, I don't see Bitcoin Cash overtaking Bitcoin. Perhaps it'll provide a secondary layer like Litecoin, for mm -hmm. example, as an alternative payment method. But I really don't see the situation where Bitcoin Cash takes over, and hey, maybe we'll all be surprised, but I think with the upcoming uh, Lightning Network upgrades to the Bitcoin Network, it's not going to make Bitcoin Cash as relevant, even though it is the most supported Bitcoin fork at the moment. Mm -hmm. I just don't see that kind of uh, flippening happen. Of course, that brings us to Litecoin, and Charlie Lee's been talking about the flappening 
recently. Oh, Did you see this? Charlie Lee. No, what is that? What is that <laughs> happening? He's, he's talking about um, the situation where uh, Litecoin gets over Bitcoin Cash again. Is the... Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Charlie Lee and I, although he doesn't know it, we have a very difficult relationship. Um, <laughs> over What was it like this past summer, I think? He tweeted something something about insider trading or, or some theory and the whole market just died for like a week and a half and people were <laughs> out on him. After that, I think I had like an open margin position during that time and I was like, that's it. Charlie Lee and I were not friends anymore. Um, I know that he gave up, he sold off his Litecoin, which concerns me. I know that there's a lot of opinions about that. Um, I do think that it doesn't speak positively towards the Litecoin as a project. I don't think he intended it that way, but it it just doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me as to why he would do that. It made sense to me, and I know a lot of people took it quite negatively when he sold off his Litecoin, but he didn't want to come at it. He believed in the project so much, he didn't want it to be, well, I'm just making myself rich. I hold all mm -hmm. this Litecoin. I'm going to be, you know, super rich at the end of the day. I don't think he came at it from that position. I think he came at it from, I believe in the technology. I believe in what we're doing here. And I don't want the criticism to be, I'm simply trying to get crazy wealthy off of this. Yeah. That's so valid. It makes sense, but I understand all the people who were highly concerned by that that move. Was it the right move for him to make? Mm -hmm. Hard to say, but it's the move that he made nevertheless. But I guess more generally, what do you think about Litecoin? Do you think it, with you know Bitcoin Cash out there, for example, and all these other uh, cryptocurrencies, does Litecoin still have a place in the market? As of right now, I would say that it does because I can tell you I've never actually held Litecoin, but I have used it to transfer from exchange to exchange or to send, um, you know, tr change it from Bitcoin to Litecoin to send it somewhere else because it's faster, it's cheaper. I think it definitely has a place until Bitcoin can scale and figure out its fees and its speeds and everything. Th when that does happen, though, I think Litecoin's going to have a hard time. A lot of other cryptocurrencies are going to have a hard time, too, I think, in that yeah. situation. Because if Bitcoin is highly scalable, super cheap to send, where do these other cryptocurrencies come in at that point? Hey, I love Litecoin, by the way. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big uh, Litecoin supporter, and I like what they do. I like the what, what they're doing behind the scenes. It's really great. And I think if they can continue to develop Litecoin, I know that Charlie Lee's already floated the ideas of putting privacy features and potentially even smart contracts... Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know. I knew the privacy features. I didn't know smart contracts. It's, you know, he's mentioned it before. Whether or not yeah. that's actually going to come to fruition, hard to say. Charlie Lee says a lot of stuff. But if we saw that come out, well, that might be a game changer for Litecoin. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move on to Cardano. So Cardano, and I think most people know this, I love Cardano. Um, I think it's an absolutely awesome project. Um as far as this year goes, I know that their Shelly release is supposed to be implemented shortly, and that will be, you know, no longer being on a bootstrapped version of the blockchain. The nodes will be working freely. I think their wallet's supposed to have more um, implementation for, like, projects and platforms and dApps and things like that. So that's definitely really interesting. Um, I do hope that Shelly comes out soon because of the fact that it's such a theoretical project right now. They definitely need something to keep the community and everybody else confident. But if they continue on the roadmap and they are hitting the marks that they're supposed to and doing what they say they're going to do, I don't see how they can't consistently increase in prices here, especially considering Hoskinson's always updating on Twitter about where he's traveling to, where he's going, what events he went to talk to about Cardano and video updates about what the project's doing. So they definitely keep people up to date. It's just a matter of they're pumping out updates and other things the way they say they're going to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Charles Hoskinson is an, is an amazing front man for Cardano. Yeah. And he's also been a very vocal advocate for uh, quite a few other cryptocurrencies too, which I, I really appreciate. He's not just you know, a, a total maximalist on his own project. Mm -hmm. He's also looking at all, all these other projects and saying they also add value to the space. They're also interesting, which is cool. Although I, I could, 
um, I suppose, disagree. I guess if it takes them longer to roll out their Shelly release or they miss their deadlines, that would be awesome. They'd probably push the price down even farther. We can add more. <laughs> this would be great. That's true. You make a good point. And then I've, I've heard other people say the same thing, and it was basically, uh, you know, I'd rather them push it back and it'd be perfect than them rush it to be on time. And I absolutely am 100% in agreement with that. Um, but I'm also kind of selfish, and I really want to see, like, what their what the kind of block rewards or what, what that whole thing is going to be about. Um, so I'm I'm excited. I'm excited and impatient. I think that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, Cardano definitely promises a lot, and I, and I really believe that in the long run, this is going to be one of the top projects. You know, buying it now for I think it's under thirty cents today. It is, yeah. Is a great opportunity to get back into it. I mean, I remember when it came out and it was two cents, and people were saying this is totally overvalued at two cents. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to buy that. All right, cool. Um, let me just go over and buy as much as I possibly can right now, because when you, you see the fundamentals of the project, you understand what's behind it, you can really understand that this is something that's really awesome. Oh, yeah. I bought it for the first time, I want to say at seven cents, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. When it, when it broke a dollar, I was like, ah, uh, this probably isn't good, mostly because I just was a little worried that they didn't have anything out to sustain that price. Where it is right now, I think, is a is a good spot for it. Um, and again, if it goes lower, then I'll buy more. So be yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Buy the dip, guys. Okay. Yeah. Neo. What do you think about Neo? Neo, I uh, just covered recently, too, and I was impressed. I have to say, I didn't know a lot about it. I always heard the Chinese Ethereum thing. But besides the fact it's a little centralized as far as the nodes go right now, I think that it is a serious uh, competitor against Ethereum once it gets up and moving. But I was impressed by the project. I was impressed by, you know, the, the, the team overall. I had good conversations with people on Discord. There was good communication. Um, but yeah, no, I think that as far as platforms go, they definitely got their stuff together and they mean business. I can't give a price estimation, but I certainly think it's going to be up for the next year or so, especially if they continue pumping out updates and keeping people involved the way they are because they're good at communicating with the community. So that's hugely important in crypto. Yeah, I've been very impressed with everything that Neo's done, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah, they've got great projects building on top of them. The The team is great with social media. They're always developing new things. Recently, of course, we have had some, some pretty serious concerns brought up. I was mentioning yesterday in my live stream, I think it's actually a good thing that this is happening now. Before it gets much bigger, let the glitches come out. Let them sort them oh, out. Oh, yeah. So obviously, like I said, centralization is a problem, but that will diminish over time. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, for sure. What about Stellar? <clears throat> so Stellar, again, did that video. Um, I guess I wasn't as unbiased as I thought because people were like, oh, you're obviously a Stellar fan. <laughs> and I forgot to mention when I made the video that I am holding Stellar. I don't have any Ripple or XRP, rather. But um, I like what they're doing. I don't necessarily like that there's a couple wallets held by the Stellar Foundation with a ton of Stellar in it, with Lumens in it. But um, the fact that they're pulling ICOs and that people are moving their projects over there is definitely good news. I um, participated in the Kin ICO, so I have some of that, which is on Ethereum, but it's going to possibly be moving to Stellar, which I think is pretty cool. So that to me, if a big corporation like Kick is looking at Seller and saying, hey, this might be a good platform for our project, I think that's a good sign as far as development and reliability of the project. So I'm interested to see how this year goes. Yeah, I feel kind of the same about Seller. <clears throat> I'm quite enthusiastic about what they've been doing. New projects are coming all the time. We have a yeah. renewable energy project coming up pretty soon on Stellar. And more and more use cases are being found for it all the time. They're working with different um, companies in Africa for remittances, for example. So Stellar is being used and yeah. it's going to keep being used and partnerships that have been signed already have been substantial and high level. And I think we'll see more of that coming through as the year moves on. So exciting yeah, times ahead for Stellar. Yeah, for sure. Monero, it's almost up to 400 bucks. Oh, I know. So <clears throat> I only have one Monero, but I bought it when it was $80. So this was like this terrible dip that we had a couple months ago. Um, I just recently learned a bit more about the project overall from the podcast. And I was surprised because I didn't understand the ring signatures and that whole thing. I think it's pretty cool. 
As far as like development, I don't know if they have any upcoming news or projects. Do you have any insight on that? Oh gosh, I know I know they've got some things coming up. I can't uh, remember off the top of my head right now, but Monero is uh, definitely looking at more development coming ahead this year. So it's not a, a stable project by any means. It's definitely moving yeah. ahead. I found, I was told, or I, I heard, I guess their Reddit is really, um, really interesting as far as they do this thing called like Skepticism Sunday or something. And they talk about all the issues with the project and they're very open about it. Another thing I heard on this podcast. But, um, and that I was impressed by because I feel like every Reddit subreddit you go to for a coin is a copy and paste. When moon, this, that, and the other thing, mm -hmm. look at this tweet from so-and-so and everything is just so pro the coin and you can't post anything questioning. That's but it, I guess you just get Monero, removed from the subreddit, which sucks. Yeah, yeah, So, but I guess Monero does the opposite, and I was impressed by that. So, um, I and I think that privacy is going to be huge this year because there's so many new people getting into crypto, and once they figure out that it's not all anonymous like they thought, they're going to be interested in privacy coins, and Monero is a big, stable name. So I'd imagine there's just by default going to be you know money going into that project. Yeah, absolutely. It's. I was just reading an article and said uh, Bitcoin is one of the most traceable currencies in the world. It doesn't really offer any anonymity because just imagine you sign up on Coinbase. They know who you are. You move yep. your Bitcoin from there to 20 different addresses, but you can still track every single <clears throat> time that moved. So for people who And they have who people who privacy, do that for a living now. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, Monero's cool. I like Monero. It's I don't hold any, and I never have it, but it's I recognize it as being one of the top privacy coins, mm -hmm. without a doubt. I mean, by market cap, it's the top privacy coin right now. The one thing I find interesting is that Monero is mined like everywhere now on the internet. You know, you can't open almost any website without having it mine Monero in the background. Everything is mining Monero, yeah. which is a, a kind of a crazy situation. I actually remember some. A few months ago, somebody emailed me saying, hey, I've got uh, a, a program I can set up on your YouTube channel so you can mine Monero in the background. I'm just like, what are you talking about? This is crazy. <laughs> I wonder what caused that to happen. Like, what was the influx for everybody? Like, hey, let's mine Monero. That's, I don't know. The, it started on the Pirate Bay, and then I think everyone just kind of realized, ooh, right. let's start doing that. That's a great idea. We can just mine it on browsers everywhere. And I remember, I think it's Salon, they actually went the full way and said, hey, you can have one of two choices. You can either A, accept ads, or B, we're going to mine Monero when you're on our website. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's an innovative way to do things. I wonder if people knew what was going on, though. <laughs> Most people probably have no idea. Like, Monero, oh, yeah, my, sure. what do you mean, mine Monero? I just want to read the article. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. I love it. Oh, uh, and interestingly, our number 10 in the top 10 list is an ICO coin, EOS. EOS, yeah. See, EOS is one that I have gotten ragged on to, to cover. I know, as far as I know, it's a platform, right? Like Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Isn't it still, wasn't it recently or still is in the ICO or is that finished? It's, it's, it's a, it is a one year ICO. The ICO has been going on for nine months already. We still yeah. have the three months of the ICO to go. They've raised what like a purpose? billion dollars in Ethereum. It's insane. What was the purpose for making it a year, though? I don't know. That's a great question. Continued my market cycle of people being excited about it and maximum dispersion possible. I suppose when you think about it, it actually gives, because there's a daily amount of EOS that's available to buy every single day, it actually lets a lot of people participate in the ICO. That's true. So there's, there's the positives there for that. But man, they've raised a lot of money. It's yeah, a crazy I know, because I had looked into it, um, I don't know, I want to say six months ago. I saw somebody mention it before I started my channel. And I was just investigating coins. And I was like, EOS, this looks cool. It's a platform. It's like Ethereum. I'm like, it's still in an I It's got months left of this ICO. No, I'm good. I I I'm far too impulsive and impatient to wait for something like that. So yeah, do you know it, much about it? Yeah, I've looked into EOS quite a bit. And it's a really interesting project. It's being developed by uh, Dan Larimer, who's developed BitShares yeah. and who's developed Steemit. And I think that's one of their biggest claims to fame at the moment as far as, you know, getting that person out in front of it. Mm -hmm. But actually, you look at a lot of the other people involved and what they're developing and how they're developing. It's going to be a very, very promising project when it comes out, when it actually gets deployed. One thing I think about the ICO that has been 
a bit worrying is that they have let these coins be freely traded on the market and there are hundreds of thousands of Americans buying EOS tokens not knowing that they have to actually register yeah. their address and that it might not be so easy for them. I feel like on the day when they switch to the mainnet, a lot of tokens are going to be lost and a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money, which is very unfortunate. I know that they're out there saying, hey, make sure you register your Ethereum address and I'm sure you can use a VPN if you're in the States to register that Ethereum address. But nevertheless, it's not a super transparent process. And I feel like there are people who are going to lose money on that, unfortunately. Well, there's going to be people like me who, you know, if I hadn't just looked into it out of curiosity and I just picked it up because it just was there, it was cheap or something, I would have no idea, you know, that that would be something I would need to do. So that's certainly, that's definitely a barrier. I hope that that doesn't really happen, but you do make a good point. So now let's move on to, uh, I guess, what would be some of your top projects out of the top 10? So... I would say obviously Ethereum, but that's just kind oh, of- Oh, outside of the top 10, oh, sorry. Oh, outside of yeah. the top 10. If I'm being completely honest with you, I haven't really looked into too, too many projects. I am in the process right now because I hold Icon of doing a video. Um, and I'm more impressed now starting to kind of understand what they're doing. I feel like people always compare, but they're calling it the Korean Ethereum, just like, or the, the Korean Neo. Um, but they're saying based on where it is and the kind of partnerships that they're doing and the amount of people that are kind of disenfranchised, I guess, in, in Korea, that they have a pretty good chance of being very successful. Um, so that should be a fun topic to cover. But as of out of the top 10 right now, I think those are the that's the only one that I've been really focusing on because I've been researching it. Interesting. I, Icon's great. There's I see a lot of promise in a lot of really cool projects outside mm. of the top 10. I mean, Icon's an amazing project. Uh, Qtum is really good as well. Very yep. strong project. And then there's all kinds of other fun stuff like Pivx, which is, you know, uh, this right, kind of, yeah. it, it's a, I, it's one of the top privacy coins, but at the same time, it's still kind of a bit of an underdog if you compare it to like Monero, for example. Mm. And it's got a lot of room to grow and a lot of potential moving forward. So yeah, I, I definitely blanked because I uh, hold a lot of Pivx and I'm very, well, I wouldn't say very, but relatively active in like their Discord and stuff because the team is like none other. They're probably the nicest community I've ever found within the crypto space. People are extremely friendly. They're constantly doing updates and development and keeping people in the loop. Um, and I think that the fact that it has privacy transactions but also transparent transactions is really cool because it gives you the opportunity to not have to have you know bitcoin and monero you can have pivx and just do both which is nice um i also am like a, a very big supporter of block i don't know if you know too much about that project Blocknet. Blocknet. yeah i know a little bit about it i haven't had i've been trying to get the uh, guys for block that on for an interview but i gotta keep chasing them yeah i mean i'll have to email you contact information but i just did a um a video with arlen who's the co-founder um, and they have, they're really all tech-based guys and they're very, very focused on the project being success. So one of the major issues people complain about is they don't do enough community outreach or they're mm -hmm. not very, you know, talkative or communicative, but the project itself is very promising and they're doing a ton of work they, and they've been hitting all of their roadmap um, time dates and requirements. So that's always a good sign, obviously. And they uh, just updated, I think, the wallet. It released a new update of the wallet, too, because they're going to be doing their um, decentralized exchange soon, which will be fun to see. Very cool. Yeah, there's so mm -hmm. many great projects out there. And mm -hmm. I know there are some real Bitcoin maximalists out there that anything that's not Bitcoin is just crap and it's not even worth looking at or investigating or spending any time on, which I think is just a massive... <sighs> just closed mind mentality yeah. of all this really cool stuff that's being developed by incredibly intelligent people mm -hmm. who are very passionate about the things that they're doing. And look, are there some projects that have weaker use cases for blockchain? Absolutely. But I, I'm more of, I guess, I don't like to use the word, I suppose, but you know, uh, more of like a, a blockchain maximalist. And uh, I, I say that as a descriptive term, but blockchain has such wide reaching potential and there's all these different projects out there that can effectively use blockchain technology to add value to what they're doing mm -hmm. no i agree with you and i think that maximalists 
have to realize too that success for one coin is a success for all because the more adoption we get across the board is going to make it easier for everyone to be successful and for things to be proactive and work. Obviously, Bitcoin was the, you know, as the first mover advantage was here, um, is the reason why people get interested in crypto because it's the one they hear about. But they also have to realize that, you know, it's not a platform right now. It doesn't have privacy transactions. Like there's Mm -hmm. other things, there's spaces for other coins to do their job. And it doesn't mean that Bitcoin's any less important or any less monumental, but you know, it can't do everything. It's just not possible. So they have to be understanding about it, but I agree with you. You know, there's a lot of really, really smart people, brilliant minds doing amazing things and trying to change the world. So everybody should be on board about that kind of success. And uh, finally, I wanted to talk a bit about the ICO market. What are your thoughts on the current state of the ICO market? I, I'm i overwhelmed um, by the ICO market most of the time because I have such a hard time differentiating between maybe not what seems like a money grab so much, but things that are redundant or I find that there's other projects that maybe this sounds a little bit like you know so- something else I just recently heard of. So it's hard for me to sift through that. I usually wait until... I hear one or two, maybe three projects getting really spoken about, and then I'll look into it because otherwise I could spend, I mean, anybody really could spend hours sifting through it, doing research, trying to figure everything out. Um, And it's hard too, because being in the US, a lot of these I can't participate in anyways. So, you know, it's really kind of one of those things that goes on the back burner for me is less important because a lot of times too, the ICO will come out and then the price drops. So I can get it cheaper on like Ether Delta or somewhere else you know, a day later. So that's a good point. Actually, it's such a buyer's market right now for ICOs in general. You have mm-hmm. massive choice. And unless you're getting in early on most ICOs, you can pick it up cheaper on Ether Delta later because the people who got <laughs> in early are selling it on Ether Delta to get their money back immediately. Yeah. Yep. And all those people that want a 10x. That's it. That's it. And <clears throat> unfortunately, there's, you really have to do your homework so much on any given ICO. And there's some really great stuff out there, some really cool things. And then there's just so much redundancy and there are ICOs that do 500% bonuses for their pre-sale investors yeah. who then just dump on everybody the second it hits the market and drives the price down. And you really have to wonder about the the intent behind those projects anyway, if that's the kind of situation that they're setting up. But yeah, we do see some really solid projects coming out. And I feel like there's been a recent trend in... AI ICOs and in ICOs that are like doing kind of freelancer services. Mm-hmm. I've seen at least five or six of those in the past uh, couple of weeks. So there's I a lot there's of- I think there's gonna be a big market for that freelance work, um, p- empowering either content creators or people doing work for themselves or trying to give a service because there's definitely a lack of, I don't know, I guess good platforms, honest, fair, places for people just to exchange work for some sort of currency. So I'm interested to see that too. I hope that those are successful because like I said, I definitely think that there's a need for it. So I guess we'll see, but I agree with you. There's been a lot of freelancer or kind of um, other other projects like that out there. Off the top of your head, any ICOs that you think are really interesting coming up in the near future? Honestly, not really. <laughs> I know that's a terrible <laughs> answer, but I really have, I just, I don't really keep an eye on them because uh, again, it to me, by the time they're hyped and I hear about them, they're probably down 50% in price somewhere. So then I'll go get it. I don't really do too much research beforehand because if I do, I'll get excited and I'll end up buying in. And then again, being yeah. in the US, sometimes I just can't. So, and the whole VPN thing could work, but I'd rather not get in trouble. Yeah, and even then you, unless you have a foreign passport or a foreign driver's license, you mm-hmm. can't really do it if you're based yeah. in the U.S. anyway because of the KYC procedures for most of them. Although there are some solutions like uh, Dragon Chain, for example. They offer it? Dragon Chain. They are an ICO incubator, one of the main things they do, but mm-hmm. all the ICOs that come out are available to U.S. citizens. I didn't know that. Yeah, That's so. cool. I'll have to check that out. That's that's something to check out, and they've had some pretty cool ICOs come out recently too. So it's definitely something to look into. And if you're a Dragon Chain Coin holder, uh, you actually get um, 
bonuses and early oh, access cool. to the ICOs, depending on how long you've had your dragon coin chains locked up mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And project worth it's looking enough. into, without a doubt. Yeah, it's pretty cool what they're doing over there. And so there's always, always so much going on. It's it's, it's hard to know what to look for, when mm -hmm. to try to find things. I know everyone's always trying to, you know, find ICOs early because if you can get out the pre-sales, you can of course make some money off of them. But we've, I think we've been seeing a situation recently too, where there are some ICOs that I know of, they're not even going to do public sales. They're going straight VC money because the venture capitalists have realized the massive potential of this. And so we see ICOs with, you know, $1 million minimum buy-ins for the pre-sale and everything gets sold out in an hour to VC firms. And I think that is not very good for the space because the one great part about the ICO in my mind was the ability for it to reach the masses. So I agree with you. And I also think that's kind of the whole idea behind cryptocurrency, right? Is giving the power back to the community, allowing people to engage in projects and be a part of stuff that they want to. And if your project's not successful, then, you know, the kind of community has spoken unanimously kind of thing. I agree with you. It's not, it's not a great look to kind of hop over the first, the first row of people to get into the back of the VCs, but I guess that's kind of a, something that's going to happen. Yeah. That's what some people are doing anyway. Yeah. And Hey, look, venture capitalists are people too, but <laughs> I, I think they should have to play by at least similar rules. To the rest yeah, I agree, of us. Yeah. I like what the guys at um, the city of Zion are doing with their exchange, Next Exchange. They're mm -hmm. running an open lottery. So basically, they're going to choose 25,000 people at random who subscribe to the whitelist, and they're going to have a chance to invest, uh, I think, $1,000. So that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It's a pretty fair way to do it instead of saying, yeah. hey, all venture capitalists, come on in, million bucks yeah. each. Here we go. <laughs> Line them up. That's it. Sorry, John, thousand bucks. You're no, you're, your money's no good here. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah i know uh, that's a crazy situation anyway let's go ahead and finish up there this has been a really cool chat great I think, rundown of the cryptocurrency market overall so thanks for taking the time to sit down this has been a lot of fun we'll have to do it again sometime absolutely anytime and by the way quick reminder links down below go subscribe to our channel